What's going on, Couch Fam? It's week eight of fantasy football, and these are my weekly PPR rankings. This week, it's all about individual matchups and game scripts. That's going to be the continuing theme uh, for all the games that we're looking at and a lot of the players that we're looking at. And of course, it's all about injuries as well. Lots of injuries, lots of questionable tags, um, and then we have Mike Thomas conspiracies. Okay, so as far as quarterbacks go, there's not a huge difference. You got to rank Russell Wilson number one. He's the best quarterback in fantasy in real life. After that... It's really not a big difference between Patrick Mahomes and um, even maybe Tom Brady or Carson Wentz or Matt Ryan. Let's just say Justin Herbert. So there's really not a big difference between number two and number nine. Because with the Chargers, they might not run the ball too much. I think Anthony Lynn, former running back, loves running backs, has used the running back position fairly well. Good enough talent there, but it is a tough matchup against the Broncos. Why not let Justin Herbert get a few rush yards and throw the ball a bit? They do have a lot of weapons to throw to. Hunter Henry, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen as well as other emerging uh, targets for the Chargers. So why, you know, but why is that? Okay, so Russell Wilson, we're, I don't think we really need to talk about. The weather is perfect, not a lot of wind, and it's Russell Wilson. With Patrick Mahomes, uh, the matchup is great, okay? So the Jets' defense aren't even going to be able to contain the Chiefs' offense, not the slightest, not one bit, but also the Jets offense might not be able to do too much against the Chiefs D. This could be another amazing game for the Chiefs defense. And then Patrick Mahomes throws his three touchdowns and he's capped right there. We might even see him rest the last uh, six or eight minutes of the fourth quarter and have the backup quarterback go in. That's how lopsided uh, this game is going to be. It's projected to be the most lopsided game, actually, uh, the whole week. And that's why Patrick Mahomes probably not going to need to throw the ball that much in the second half. And in the second half of the game, we'll probably see a lot of Le'Veon Bell once the Chiefs have the lead. Why not get... Levy on Bell in the revenge game against the Jets. I mean, everyone hates the Jets. Everyone hates Adam Gase. And, um, you know, he'll get some practice as well as running hard against his former team. And it's really the same thing with all these guys. And as far as matchups and game script goes, I rank Joe Burrow higher than the consensus because both align quite well. And Jadavion Clowney, um, I believe he might be, he's either resting or he's hurt right now. And so, uh, you know, if he's out, that's going to be an even bigger deal. Titans defense, they have a lot of good players, actually. Just haven't been able to put it together, not one bit. Their defense is pretty bad. And Joe Burrow, no one's throwing the ball more than this guy. They throw early, they throw often, and they throw late because they're always down in games. They're going to be down against a beastly tight ends offense with Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill, and also all of Tannehill's receivers are now healthy. Oh boy, that's not looking good uh, for the Bengals. They're likely going to be trailing this entire game. And then on top of that, Joe Burrow, uh, just like in college, he showed that he's got some wheels and he can get you those rushing stats as well. We love them. He's got Boyd. He's got, um, I paused right there. I thought I said John Ross on accident, but no. He's got Tyler Boyd. He's got A.J. Green and another great matchup for T. Higgins here uh, going against the Titans. So he's got all his weapons. Uh, Joe Mixon might be out though, but... Um, I don't know. I think that might even help Burrow more. Maybe they throw the ball a couple more times. And Gio Bernard, one thing he's really good at is catching the ball. And, and so that's not going to really affect Joe Burrow much. I'd say that's a non-factor as far as ranking him uh, for fantasy quarterbacks. Um, 
yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's really it. Also, uh, one thing that is a huge deal, um, I forgot to say in the intro, is the weather and the wind. It's uh, going to be quite the factor as some of the wind projections have picked up. So um, this is a dome game, actually, in Detroit. They're playing in a dome. But we have the Browns. Vegas game in Cleveland, 25 mile an hour winds. Now, 16 and above is is strong winds that affect the game. But when you see 25 plus, that's a huge red flag. It's not caution anymore. It's really watch out. That means very little deep passes, if at all, and a lot of running and a lot of short passes. And... Um, yeah, so that's that game's very windy. Also, the Packers game. This is going to affect a lot of the lawn throws right here. Um, and then, you know, the Bengals game, a little bit of wind. And Bills game, a, a good amount of wind. That, that also means lower scoring games. And then this one is probably the biggest just because I hear about the swirly winds in Chicago. So not only could it be very very strong winds but also unpredictable winds and and swirly winds where the direction constantly changes and that's going to be very difficult uh, for quarterbacks and kickers so yeah um you know just keep note on that the little bit of rain or something i'm not too worried about but you know if you got rain on top of the wind that makes it even worse and so now it's wet now visibility could be an issue so just take note of the weather. I don't like to overreact when it comes to weather, uh, but you got to know what to look for. And that's going to come into play here. So, yeah, I mean, this game here, you know, keep track of the wind. You got to keep track of the wind. Let's move on to running backs. And Derrick Henry going against the Bengals. That's my number one uh, running back. It's got to be. And even ahead of Alvin Kamara in PPR. And you know what? I actually love Kareem Hunt so much that I'm ranking him at a, ahead of Kamara. And Kamara in PPR, look, he's amazing. But um, this game here could be absolute death for the Raiders. We can see Kareem Hunt get 200 yards. And when you see that type of upside, so you know the volume is going to be there. The efficiency is going to be there. And Kareem Hunt in the pass game is quite deadly, especially with these high winds. We're going to see a lot of short passes to the tight end, to Jarvis Landry, maybe Hunter Renfro, maybe Aguilar, definitely Darren Waller. Um, and so this is definitely the game script, the matchup for Kareem Hunt. And uh, the Eagles, you know, with, with Danucci, let's move. Ezekiel Elliott really can't be trusted. Um, so let's put him, like, right here. We got to move him down a few spots. Look, if Dalton was alive and he was going to play, I'd trust Zeke a lot more. And I'm starting Zeke, don't get me wrong. I have him in two leagues, and I'm starting him in both leagues. Um, not even questioning it, but just keep, uh, just temper expectations, right? Like Danucci against the Eagles defense, it just, it's not right. That whole team's a dumpster fire and it's trending downwards. They're shipping off players. They're probably looking more towards next year. They're definitely not winning a Super Bowl this year. So why not play a little bit for the future? You got to think about the next two years. What are you going to do with Dak? How are we going to improve the the defense? You know, what you know, you got to make those tough decisions. Um, Ronald Jones, I, I don't like him anymore now that Fournette is available uh, and, and he's healthy. But this is a good game script for Rojo. He could be getting a ton of carries with the Bucks being up against the Giants. Also, Aaron Jones, I really thought he was going to play. But if he's not, again, this is one of the games with strong wins. Jamal Williams, oh boy, we're looking at a RB1. Let's even move him up. Let's move him up another one, heck. Um, and if Aaron Jones isn't playing, I'll keep I'll move him up ahead of Gurley. 
but uh, I, I really don't know. Let's just say he is playing. Let's move him. You know what? Let's move him up another spot. Because if Aaron Jones is out, we're looking at a high-end RB1, basically. Like, it's going to be so crazy. Dalvin Cook also should be getting a lot of run. Um, What's the chance he sits? I guess there's a tiny chance he doesn't play. I'm expecting Dalvin Cook to play. Okay, with wide receivers, this is the toughest position to rank for me this week. And it's from what I was a lot of what I was saying. And we're talking about some individual matchups here. Tyreek Hill, great matchup. Devontae Adams, great matchup. But that wind scares me. And that wind, you know, Devontae Adams is still going to do well. It's just the wind is going to limit those big plays. And so... You know, instead of Devontae Adams getting 10 catches for a hundred and let's say 110 yards, he might get nine catches uh, for for 79 yards or something like that. You know, a lot of shorter passes, a lot of more manufactured plays, rub plays, pick plays. They don't want to call it that. Um, and so, yeah. Um, you just got to, you know, just, uh, but you got to rank him number one, though. Like, it's just, it's so, the match, the individual matchup, no one's going to be able to cover him on the Vikings. Like, that's for sure. And um, I've always thought these Falcons games are going to be shootouts and high scoring. And other than the Cowboys game, they've been a little bit disappointing as of late. But with all this weather going on and, and these strong winds, I think this is the game that's a good game to target as far as fantasy points. Curtis Samuel might do some things. Mike Davis is sure to do some things. Todd Gurley has a decent matchup. He's a low-end RB1. Uh, yet again, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, DJ Moore again. It could blow up. And then Robbie Anderson. You know, I love all these players in this game. And the weather isn't perfect or anything tonight, but uh, compared to the other games, it's better than average uh, when you're talking about the average of week eight weather. Yeah, A.J. Brown didn't practice. Um, here's the thing. See, Mike Evans, I'm actually telling most people to start him, telling some people not to if they have great options not you know with teams on buying injuries not too many great options but i do expect him to be shadowed by bradbury of the giants and he's really their best defensive player and i i don't think he's going to do well now you know this is it's just a tough one to put so I think a guy like Tyler Boyd has such a better matchup, and we know what's going to happen. The Bengals are going to throw the ball that I would rank him a little bit lower. So let's move him down just a little bit. And then um, we got Jair Alexander. That's another one I wanted to talk about. Uh, a lot of people are talking about best defensive player this year. He could win that award, defensive player of the year. And he should be on Adam Thielen so let's move Adam Thielen down one spot and he could shadow Adam Thielen the whole game while Justin Jefferson will have a sexy sweet matchup and another it could blow up one another game right here and so let's put Justin Jefferson let's just move him up a couple spots um because I love Cooper Cuff's matchup. I think they're going to be using him. Maybe some more three wide receiver sets. Tyler Higby is trending upwards to playing. But if Cooper Cuff stays in the slot, he's going to do a lot of damage. And I think that's going to happen. That's why this is a Cooper Cup game. Robert Woods, again, will probably be disappointing. Let's move him down a few spots. Yeah, and so I like the, yeah, this looks uh, pretty good. Travis Fulgham, actually, amazing matchup. He should do well, but, and that's what I want to talk about with Wentz, actually, and I didn't. Um, so with Wentz and the Eagles D and the Eagles offense. Now, if Danucci is starting, and even if Dalton is starting, possibly, without practicing much this week, it could be a problem game where the Eagles have a lead in the first quarter and absolutely dominate this lopsided game. 
And so, yeah, Travis Fulgham could get his. And then, you know, it could be just let's run with uh, Corey Clement, <laughs> you know, instead of Boston Scott even. Let's let everyone rest. With that being said, I still like him. And you may want to start him as a wide receiver three or flex, even wide receiver two. So he's good. I like him. Just know that some of the upside is limited because of the game script. Um, you know, I'd probably rather rather start him over. Um, you know, Hollywood Brown's got a tough matchup. But what about Jalen Rager, folks? He's back. He's healthy. Uh, we got to rank him a little bit higher. Uh, Jalen Rager is looking like he's going to play. He's activated off IR. So let's just move him up a few spots and, you know, a few dozen spots maybe. I don't know what's going on with Mike Thomas. Don't ask me. Let's just put him here for now. 34. Consider starting him, but probably bench him his first game back. Let's do that. I think that's a good spot for him right there at 34. For tight ends, I think this is the first time I'm doing this. I'm ranking Kittle number one. His individual matchup is not great because the Seahawks are doing okay against tight ends. But there's not quite a tight end like George Kittle out there. And it seems like the Niners are going to have to throw the ball a little bit and play catch up going against the league MVP Russell Wilson, that offense is on fire. And uh, Kelsey, I love, he, actually he has the best matchup as far as the Jets playing tight ends, as far as his individual matchup. They're not going to be able to defend him, but he's going to be so limited. His upside is going to be so limited that I'm ranking Kittle number one. And I'm actually starting Jimmy G in two leagues. Uh, I believe I have Kyler Murray on by. So I'm rolling out Jimmy Garoppolo. A um, little bit reluctant, but the matchup is great against the Seahawks. And like I said, Kittle's not an ordinary tight end. He should ball out. Janu Smith has a great matchup against the Bengals. Rob Gronkowski is turning into a must start. And a guy that... You know, I'm going to go ahead and rank him higher. Talk about good matchups. This one's going to be a sneaky one because the Rams defense is great. They look like, you know, they're okay and this and that. But his individual matchup, he's not going to be... I don't think they're going to match up well against Gusecki. And I do like Tua. He's got a rough week one matchup where he could fail. But I think the team wouldn't do that if they didn't have enough confidence in him. He could be the next NFL star, ladies and gentlemen. And so let's put Gusecki up a few spots. Let's put him right here. And the reason I didn't put him ahead of Gronk is just because a lot of injuries to the Buccaneers. Antonio Brown's not playing week eight. Chris Godwin is injured. Scotty Miller downgraded to questionable all of a sudden. Um, and we know OJ Howard is injured. So with all these injuries, Rob Gronkowski is a pretty good start. And so uh, I'm going to rank it like this. I, I like Gasecki as a really good sneaky start this week. Now, the top two, these are super elite defenses. That's the Chiefs D going against the Jets and the Eagles D going against Danucci's Cowboys. Now, the Bucks D is right behind them going against the Giants. You figure with Daniel Jones and that Giants offense, defenses will figure out a way to get points, whether it's interceptions, QB pressures, sacks, Danny fumbles, Danny trips. Something's going to happen to where the Bucks are going to get fantasy points. And a little bit surprise here, maybe. I moved the Saints D all the way up here. It's going to be windy. That usually means low scoring. Also, the Bears don't have an O-line. Montgomery, he's an okay talent running back. I'm a fan of his, but they just can't run the ball. Um, and a lot of injuries to the Bears, including Allen Robinson, who may not be able to play in clear concussion protocol. I'm not expecting him to. Allen Robinson, by the way, one of my favorite players in the league. I love him. 
but I don't think he's going to play. And if he doesn't play, that's going to completely change this game because the defense for the Saints are going to be able to game plan around that. They're not going to need to uh, focus on, all right, let's stop Allen Robinson. Where's Allen Robinson lined up? Are we single covering him? Are we double teaming him? Do we have faith in Marshawn Lattimore to shadow him? All that stuff in the coaching room, in the defensive room for strategy gets thrown out the window. Now we're just like, all right, no big plays will win this game. Like it's going to be an easy game without Allen Robinson. So even when Allen Robinson is not getting his stats, his, his receptions, his touchdowns, his yards, defenses still have to worry about him because he's their best offensive player with him out completely changes everything. Now it's like, are we going to put Javon Wims out there a lot? The Bears as a wide receiver. Are we going to play Cole Komet a lot and go two tight end sets? Are we going to try to run the ball? It's just not a good look. And uh, it, they're pretty much tied with the Bills. Now, the Patriots have surprised us before. Uh, but with this weather condition, a low scoring game, and Julian Edelman being ruled out, I guess we can put the Bills in an elite category as well. So these top five defenses are all great. So pretty much checks all the all the boxes um, for the Bills defense, except one is that you got Bill Belichick and Cam Newton and a team that when you think they're down and out and they're going to suck, they pull off some crazy victory. Now that Patriots magic has worn off the past couple years. It's not, I mean, it's still there in New England, but it's not so potent, okay? It's kind of hidden. It's kind of dormant. That magic still exists. I don't think the Patriots will be able to ignite it and use the magic this week, but there's always that small chance, right? Any given Sunday. I don't know if you can say any given Sunday if it's not a Sunday game. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work, I don't think. Yeah, so try to get one of these top five defenses if you can. And um, if you can't, you know, good luck this week. Just roll with whatever. Also, I'm telling everyone to pick up the Patriots defense for next week because they play the Jets. Always think ahead. I'm even hoarding uh, Chargers and, and Dolphins D in some leagues. Uh, Washington has some good matchups coming up. I'm looking ahead because uh, if you have a defense going up against the Jets or a really bad team like uh, Danucci Cowboys or something, that's an automatic advantage for you. You're going to get 5 or 10 you know, point advantage right there uh, just by starting one of those amazing defenses. No better year to stream defenses than this, than this year, baby. Um, for kickers, I think let's move this. Yeah, let's leave him here. I, I really like Joey Sly. I'm rolling him out in a lot of leagues. Um, I'd even have him ahead of Blankenship. I think this is the this is the week for Joey Sly going against the Falcons. He'll have a lot of opportunities. Other than that, it's pretty messy. Um, Jake Elliott and Jason Myers are two guys that are available in a lot of deep leagues. If you can't find an elite kicker, um, and who else I wanted to really point out really quickly, Will Lutz. Look, I love him. Great kicker. And the matchup's actually pretty good too. It's just the wins. Like they might not, you know, and it's also Sean Payton. They might put in a little um, Taysom Hill play or something or, you know, run a crazy play or go for it on fourth down and not kick those long field goals. And if they do, the wind's going to blow it away. Um, they might go for two. Like there's just so many things in a windy game like this that I don't want to recommend Will Lutz. Now, if you got Will Lutz and you want to keep him for the long term, it's okay. Roll him out. You know, that's the same for any elite kicker. You know that's it's cool because it's such a it's such a hard position to predict. You know that's okay, but um, I do like Joey Sly better. Um, I do like Jake Elliott better. I just think there's going to be so many opportunities to settle for field goals uh, going against the Cowboys. So keep in mind the weather. Keep in mind the wind. Keep in mind the matchup, and keep in mind the individual matchup, the linebackers, safeties, or cornerbacks that are going up against your wide receivers and tight ends. 
Make sure you guys are subscribed to this YouTube channel. Also subscribe to our second YouTube channel, Fantasy Couch Podcast. You can find it here or there or link below in the description. Please subscribe to both. Have the bell notification turned on. Smash that thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Thumbs down if you didn't. Everybody, let's go get that win this week. It's an important week for us to win. Good luck.